Hello everyone, welcome back to another video in our advanced NSC4 test lab um, creation series something something. My name is Devin Adams, I'm a Fortinet instructor here in Tempe, Arizona. And yeah, this is like the ninth or 10th or 11th video in the series. I did not think it'd be this big, but guys, I'm excited to finally take you through these steps. And uh, in the last videos, we, we did enough, right? to get our local FortiGate and our remote FortiGates configured. Because remember here, the, the goal here is to give you guys a test environment for you guys to play around with. So you can go ahead and take the lessons from class or uh, the cookbooks, right? And start using them in these topologies. That's the ultimate goal itself, all right? Uh, so we, we did that. Uh, but now let's go ahead and in this video, our goal, and I'll try to keep it way shorter, is to wrap up the, the, the two PCs here, all right? Uh, the DC controller, the Ford and Manager, those are all going to be uh, bonuses, all right? I'm going to delete that IP address. I don't really care about it for right now. Um, so those are going to be outside of, of what I think is needed for your bare minimum. Um, but let's go ahead and finish configuring these two machines here. So uh, we already did a pretty good job on this side, all right? Uh, we went ahead and optimized it by turning off some of those settings. Uh, we got rid of the background, okay? As you can see, oops. So we got rid of the background. And, and for a gig of RAM, it's, it's not doing too bad of a job. I, it still cracks me up, though, that Windows 10 has cranked up my CPU <laughs> from, from like 5% all the way up to 42%. Uh, that's okay. So uh, now what we're going to do is um, wrap this up. So for starters, I am done with the static IP addresses. So I'm going to come in here and I am going to change it to DHCP. Now why? And that's because uh, you're going to see here when we do like the domain controller and everything like that, uh, we're going to want to pass out the IP addresses for DNS through DHCP. We're going to want to make those changes to our devices that don't don't have that server status. So uh, here we go. So you can just go back to being a DHCP. All right, network. There you, oh, ta da! Wunderbar. Perfect. Details. Wonderful. Good times. All right. Um, wow. Look at that. Those are the FortiGuard DNS servers. Okay, anyways, I uh, got it from the FortiGate. So that is taken care of. Now the next thing I'm going to want to do is, this is going to be my management PC. This is the PC I'm going to be spending the most time working out of. So let's go and get some tools. All right, so uh, one of my favorite sites that I've been using for, year, for years, right, is uh, Nine Night. So, nightnight.com. If you guys have never been here before, it is an amazing website. Uh, it essentially gives you like a shopping cart uh, uh, set of options here to configure. Um, and then it just installs them. It doesn't have any prompts. It does it auto magically. And on top of that, it skips all the bloatware. So, uh, let's go ahead and see what we need. Uh, now, normally I do Firefox because that's what we used in class. I have some cohorts of mine that, that swear by um, Opera, so I'm going to try to start using that uh, just to try it out. So uh, what else do we got here that we might need? Um, maybe Thunderbird, right? Because uh, uh, maybe we'll integrate some emails into our uh, lab environment. That is definitely, definitely outside of an advanced lab, but that's, that's one I'll put on my list to do. But uh, there will be our mail client there. Uh, let's see what else we can do here. Um, isn't this great though? Definitely want 7-zip, right? Uh, why don't you give me a good PDF reader? Okay. You're not going to rock out things like Spotify or anything like that. Um, definitely FileZilla. Notepad++ and Putty, right? Those are some things that I can I can see us using, um, and you can always come back. You can always come back. Now, I'm going to leave it up to you guys if you want to put antivirus on those things. It's it's an isolated test environment. I really don't care as long as it's isolated from your internal network. I'm going to let you guys be professionals and decide 
on what to do there, <laughs> all right? But there we go. That's what I'm going to pick for right now, all right? So uh, once I pick my apps, I hit Get Your Night Night. Okay, it's going to take us here. It's going to automatically download. I hit uh, Run. And that is it. All right, it's going to go ahead and install those apps for me, download them and install them. So while that is working, let's go ahead and close out of this machine and let's go optimize our remote PC. All right, so here we are. Just like before, I'm going to get rid of this sugar, that junk. And this is our Windows 10 machine. Just empty that out. And I don't really care to see the, the background here. Uh, just as Z proof, see how it got out to the internet and it became good for 90 days. So, um, just as a little reminder there that you're, these are legal, this is okay. Uh, well, let's go ahead and the resolution looks okay, but I still do not like that background. Now, it might not let me change that background. Um, I know that Windows 8.1 was like that. If you didn't didn't license it, you couldn't change the default background. Um, now, in all reality, if I was using this as a test environment, I'd probably dump Windows 10. Um, but if you're using it in your own production and you want that Windows 10, you can either dedicate more resources to it, all right, or you can, um, you know, optimize it like we're doing here. So it looks like it is allowing us. So that's that's kind of nice, all right. We'll do a solid color. Now, like I said, just we might need to test it one of these days, but it might revert it back to a uh, the background when you do a reboot. Um, there we go. All right, that's not too bad. Uh, I definitely am not using Cortana. All right, so you can right click here and say Cortana. Uh, stay hidden. I don't. I don't even want to see you. If I want to search for something, you just go to your your start menu here, and you can start typing. Um, just to show you guys that it still works, right? Command prompt. You don't need that Cortana bar. And I'm definitely not downloading apps from the App Store. So I'm going to just unpin a couple of these. And I'd probably go in here, and I won't do this on the video itself, but I'd probably go in here and try to debloat some of this Windows 10. Just the little default applications that get installed on here. So if you go to Apps and Features, uh, you'll see that it tries to give you at least you know, a handful of features that are that are very Windows 10-ish that we might never use, right? Like get help, get office, you don't need that stuff. Uh, some of them might not even let you remove them, all right? Um, that get office though, I'm pretty sure we can uninstall, right? Takes a little bit of time, but remember this could be a test environment that you use quite often. We're not gonna be doing any gaming Alright, <laughs> things like that. Okay, so I'll leave that up to you guys, because um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna have you guys watch me do that. Uh, but I am definitely going to right click here, and I'm gonna go to my system just like I did before. All right, and burr, burr, burr. okay, and then oh, definitely increase that, guys. Definitely increase that. But um. Let's see here. Let's see about. All right. Wow, that's not even the the traditional. Let's see here. Just this metro UI. Here we go. Let me try this. Let's go to uh is control panel still living back there? Oh, it is. It's holding on. I picture this control panel with no teeth. We're going to rock her. Hey, back in my day. All right, here we go. Um, all right, so system. Jeez, that's what I wanted, right? This should look familiar, okay? So once again, guys, I'll probably power this down and increase that to at least two gigs, uh, depending on what you are are uh, available to, to dish out. As you can see, it's kind of calmed down and we're back to just using a, a percentage of our CPU utilization. But uh, if you remember from our last videos, we're gonna come here to our advanced system settings. We're gonna go to our performance, go to settings, 
Let's see how it has a whole bunch of a whole bunch of uh, shading turned on and and looking good stuff. I'm just going to hit OK and turn all that off. And it should increase the performance quite a bit on the Windows machine. All right. So, and then I'm going to leave it up to you guys uh, how far you want to go in the remote machine. I don't know how much you guys are going to use it, but you could do things like put on the 40 clients on the side. Uh, maybe to practice your VPN, SSL VPNing. Uh, you can put it on a different web browser. I know from personal experience, though, the majority of our stuff is going to happen on the local side of our FortiGate. So I'm actually just going to, that's where I'm going to leave the optimization. But you can come here and do night nights also and get the applications that you need. Definitely to blow up the thing. All right. And uh, yeah, anyways. So there you guys go. Uh, let's go back to our management PC. As you can see, we have all of our tools installed. All right. There we go. The ones that I'm going to use often will probably be the web browser. So let me go ahead and uh, and uh, let's see here. Unpin from taskbar. Uh, pin to taskbar. There we go. That was kind of weird. Maybe remove Internet Exploder. Someone called that Internet Exploder the other day, and I nearly died. All right, so I'm definitely not going to be listening to tunes. So let's unpin that guy. All right, so maybe Putty I'll go ahead and put on the taskbar. Heck, I'll just put all of them so I can have down here what I need going forward. So, all right, not too bad. All right. Hey, guess what, guys? We have a pretty good little management uh, PC here. So the only last thing I want to show in this video, though, is, uh, and I have not used this, this web browser, um, but I'm going to check it out. So here we go. Um, so I suggest, ugh, I hope it does not prompt me like that. Uh, I suggest we add the bookmark. So is there a bookmark? Is there like a bookmark view in this bad boy? Like a bar? All right, so I'm not too sure, to be honest with you guys. Speed dial, bookmarks, there we go. All right, so I just suggest um, putting some, uh, oh, there it is, show the bookmark bar. All right, putting your devices up here. So like, for example, uh, 10 dot, 0.1.254. All right. See how it's the FortiGate? So let's go ahead. <laughs> a heart. Oh, that's so cute. There we go. And can we call this local FortiGate? Yes, we can. And this way you don't have to constantly be typing in your IP addresses. So 200.3.1. We'll call this the remote. Oh, look at that. Nice and red remote FortiGate. All right. Remote FortiGate. And heck, put it before the other one. And let's do our PF sense. You never know. You might want to get in there and start playing around and doing all that fun stuff. So there that is. So let's heart that. All right. PF sense. Beautiful. So now you can just come in here and dive in and okay, good. I'm like, I better be able to hide that because that's just annoying. Um, see? Not too bad, right guys? So there you guys go. Um, I don't really know what else to show you except for maybe coming in here and making sure that your dates and times are all correct. Um, right, but you guys probably know how to do this already. Okay. There we go. So you can see it's getting close for me to go home here. Um, but yeah, as far as I know, that is it for that. Now we have a, essentially a working NSC4 lab that resembles closely like to one that we did in class. So... Uh, guys, I think that's enough to, to be officially official there. So um, there should be enough here for you to do whatever you need to do 
uh, with the 40 cookbooks and so on and so forth. So there you guys go. Very long series. It's not done yet, by the way. I still have an hour before I go home. Haha. -ha. So, uh, but you know what? If you guys stopped right there, I think you'd be in pretty good shape. And I think we did a pretty good job. So, uh, but in the next video, we're going to take it a step further and essentially set up the domain controller. And the reason why I want to get domain controller in here, because I realized after teaching for a bit, uh, we all come from way different walks of life. And not all of us have sysadmin uh, underneath our, our belt. All right. So. Um, or maybe you have a separate sysadmin team and you don't want to bug them about getting some kind of, you know, uh, testing done or whatever have you. So we're just going to do some, some uh, very basic, high-level sysadmin stuff, if I can remember anything from my M MCSA. I'm just kidding, by the way, guys. I am an, FC, uh, an FCT. I am an FCT, a uh, Fortinet certified trainer, but I'm also a Microsoft certified trainer. Um, so, but I teach probably 15 to 20 Fortinet classes to every Microsoft class. But uh, what I'm trying to say here, you're still going to want to use best practices before using what we're going to demo up coming up next in an actual production network. But I want at least enough there for you to be able to like do an LDAP query or to do a certification if you need to. So uh, let's end it right there. And once again, thank you guys. And we'll see how far we can go today. So I'll see you guys on the beach.